Hello and welcome to more Final Fantasy! In the last episode, we trained up and we went and tackled one of the hardest dungeons in the game, the Marsh Cave. After going to there, we got this fancy item right here, the crown, and we have to take that back to the guy in the northwestern castle who was looking for that crud. Now, I'm completely out of healing potions, but my team is healed up from using a cabin. We do have two spell charges still on red, so we could use some cure if we need to. So before we go back to that castle, I want to go back to town so we can rest, get our magic up, all that kind of good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and start walking back to town. I'll just meet you guys there. I will try to fight any battles I can along the way. Uh, I've got five pure potions left, so if I get poisoned, I'll be fine. Uh, and hopefully we just won't die along the way back. These guys should be easy enough, so I'll just meet you guys in town, and we'll see how much money and all that code we have when we get there, because we are going to want to buy some stuff. And here we are back in Elfland. I'm going to go heal up. Let's take a look at how much money we have. So 6,111, that's awesome. I'm going to want about 5,500 to buy some stuff real quick, but we do have a few things to sell that we got in the Marsh Cave as well. So first off, let's go ahead and rest up, and we'll get some stuff sold, and I'll show you guys what I want to buy. So if we take a look at our weapons, we've got an extra short sword right here, as well as a large knife. So I'm gonna sell both of those, and then if we go over to our armor, you can see we have an extra chainmail, so I'm gonna go ahead and sell that as well. Now the only thing about this game is you can only sell weapons in the weapon shop and armor in the armor shop. So right here, we'll go ahead and sell the, uh, the weapons. So we'll sell the short sword, we'll sell the large knife right there. And now we have to go over to the other side of town and do the armor. Okay, we'll go sell, we'll go to red because he's the one holding the extra chain. And there we go. Ah, uh, no, no, I don't, I don't want to buy anything quite yet. So, all right, we're out of there. Now I want to go and buy a weapon. I guess I could have done this while I was there, but we've got those silver swords that are 4,000 each. Very expensive. I want to get one for way and one for red, but right now we can only afford one. So I'm going to go ahead and buy, and we'll go ahead and buy one silver sword. We'll give that one to Wei, and I guess since we've sold that one, we could, uh, or since we bought that, we could sell his old short sword. So we'll get rid of that crud. And yeah, the, the silver sword is amazing. We're going to be using that for a long time. So there we go, let's go ahead and equip that. And I also want to go buy a little bit of magic, so we're gonna go over here. I'm not gonna buy any black magic right now, but I'll just go ahead and show you guys what is available here at the shop. Not way, let's go to red. Um, so right here we've got fire two and lightning two. That's pretty much like fire one and lightning one, except they do more damage and they target all enemies, so really, really good. We also have hold. This is a thing that can paralyze an enemy. It can be good in some situations, but I just don't think it's worth the money or worth the spell slot. Since, remember, we can only have three spells per level on each character, so gotta pick our spells carefully. We also have Lock 2, which is completely bugged. It's supposed to increase our accuracy, I think, but what it actually does is it increases the enemy's evasion. It makes us more likely to miss, so it is actually bad to use. It is not even neutral. It is straight up bad to use. So be very careful with that one. Never buy lock two in this version. So we're gonna go over this way and there is a spell I do want to buy, level three white magic here. So let's go over to red once again. And here we can get a fire, anti-fire. We're gonna go ahead and grab that. Heck yeah, we also have harm two, which is just like harm one except more damage. We've got cure two, it's like cure one except more healing. And we've got heal. This is a thing that actually red cannot learn. Only Dr. W is gonna be able to learn that one. But it's a group-wide heal. It'll heal all four of our dudes. I do eventually want to get this and Harm 2 on, uh, over, over on Dr. W, but not quite yet. We're going to go ahead and leave for now because, well, we just can't afford to buy anymore. We've got 1188, so that's fine for now. I'm going to go buy a few more healing potions, and we're going to go back to the Northwestern Castle, give that dude his crown. And while we're here, I'm also going to buy another cabin. Just having the option to save is really, really handy. So I'm gonna do that. Eventually I will go back to the starting town and buy just a whole bunch of tents, because tents are only 75. They'll let you save just like a cabin would. So just having a bunch of those on hand so you can save whenever you want on the overworld, really, really handy. So eventually I will go buy those, but for now, we'll just buy a handful of heal potions. Probably I'm just gonna buy as much as I can here, and then we're gonna move on with our adventure. You know what, I'm gonna stop with 218 gold left, and the reason for that is pretty simple. If a character dies, it costs 200 to revive them, so just in case somehow someone dies, I wanna have a little bit of money left over. All right, we're gonna get out of this place, and we're going to go back to that castle. You guys have already seen me walk over there before, so I'll just uh, meet you guys over there. And here we are, right outside the castle, and I'm just gonna give you guys a bit of a spoiler. The, the castle, the guy in here, it's going to be a boss fight. He's going to betray us, so I want to go and use a cabin, and I want to do something risky because I am recording, but I am going to save right here, and the reason will become very clear in a minute. So let's go ahead and save, and hopefully my recording does not get corrupted and I lose the first couple minutes of this one. So there we go, we got that crud. Let's get back out. 
And in we go. This boss fight is extremely unfair. There's a very high chance of us just not being able to do it, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So, in we go. We've got this guy. Let's talk to him. Ha ha ha! I am Astos, King of the Dark Elves! I don't know why it's happy music. I have Matoya's crystal, and you shall give me that crown. No! So this is Astos the Dark Elf, King of the Dark Elves. This is the guy that put the Elf King, or the Prince, or whatever, to sleep. I don't know why you put him to sleep, and now he's just chilling right here instead of trying to take over the world. I don't know, but suddenly boss fight. This is Astos. This guy is an absolute butt. So this guy, on his first round, will always use an instant death spell. If it actually hits me, there's a, a good chance it will. I'm gonna have to restart my game and try again. There's no way I'm going to try to beat this guy with one of my dudes dead. So very unfair, but if he hits us, he hits us. Now, what I'm going to do here is start off the fight by going with uh, anti-fire. Gonna fight with Ken and with Wei, and we're also going to use anti-lightning. So this fight, will he will eventually use fire 2 or lightning 2, which can hit all of our party members. We want to get resistance up for that. Come on. 16 damage. This guy's got a lot of defense, so he doesn't have a lot of HP, though, so we, may, we might be fine. We'll see. As long as we don't get hit by the instant death spell, we should be okay. Okay, go for it, Ken. One damage. Very good job. Okay, anti-fire going in as well, so as long as we don't get hit by the instant death, we should be in a pretty good spot here. All right, let's see what he does. Come on! No! Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and restart. We have no way to revive our character at this point in the game. So I will restart and we'll try again here. All right, let's go in for round number two. Let's just hopefully get lucky. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna use anti-fire, anti-lightning, and hopefully not get hit by rub, which is uh, supposed to be called death, but they called it rub in this version for some reason. All right, we'll go ahead and fight that guy. Let's do anti-fire, fight, and anti-lightning. And let's see how it goes this second time. Now, one thing you'll notice, Wei is pretty much the only one who can do decent damage to this guy with melee. Red and Ken really can't, so Wei having that Silver Sword helps out a lot. The other guys could potentially, if they get a critical. Without a crit, though, it's going to be one damage. So, on future turns, I am going to have Red use magic rather than using melee attacks, because he's just going to do one damage, most likely, with melee. So... Come on. Okay, okay, we're good. We get to go for a second round. So we'll go fight. Let's go to magic, and we're going to go and use ice. Might as well use that. Fight right there, and we'll go ahead and use a cure two on Dr. W himself. Let's see how we do here. Come on. 46 big damage. This guy's got like 160 HP, something like that. 37. All right, so as long as we dodge the rub, we should be in a good spot. I'll get a miss right there, though. Cure two going in. Wow, we got some big hits that round. I'm very happy. Only three damage. Looking awesome. Okay, let's go in with ice once again. Fight. And you know what? We're going to go ahead and... I could boost some defense here, but I don't really need to. Let's go fight again. And let's see what we get here. One damage. Excellent. Let's see how Dr. W does. Also one damage. There goes the rub. Gosh dang it, guy. Well, we probably win. But, uh... I'm gonna restart because I want the experience. It's a lot of experience. I want it on everyone. So <laughs> we'll try again. Ah! Gosh dang it, rub. Why does he have to rub me? I don't need those stinking rubs, dude. I'm just so bummed out that we didn't get him last time because he was so close to dead. We could have won at that point. We were really close. There we go, there we go. We dodged the rub. Awesome. So now we're pretty much good. Two hits, 38 damage, big damage right there. Ken, Ken got a critical, oh my gosh, we win. Yeah, he will eventually use Rub again if the fight goes on for a very long time, but because we have this Silver Sword on Wei and we have Ice on Red, who's gonna do some big damage as well, there's no way he's gonna live that long. So the only other danger would be if he hits us with Fire 2 or Lightning 2, which he's just not going to, well, he might, but it's not gonna do a whole lot because we have these Antis up. So I think we're pretty much guaranteed to win. He will use Slow 2 on Red, that's fine because we're not using melee attacks anyways. Ice doing some big damage there. Come on, Ken, get another critical. Holy crud, Ken! All right, Ken is amazing. Let's go for another ice spell. And honestly, I don't even really need to heal. So let's keep attacking here. That might be it. We might be done right here. And there it is, man. We did not even have to deal with Fire 2 or Lightning 2. I'm glad we had the defenses up anyways, but look at that experience. Look at that gold. Awesome stuff. And that's going to be level 8 for our characters. Very, very cool. So you could, if you want, you can keep fighting after you get hit by Rub. I would not recommend it just because that is a lot of experience and having your team split where some characters are one level and another character is a different level, it's kind of annoying. So I would definitely recommend, nothing here. I would definitely recommend to reload if you want or if you're using a version of the game where you can use save states, just abuse that crud. But for doing that, we get the crystal. So we have to take that back to Matoya in her cave 
and uh, see if we can get the herb to revive or awaken the elf prince. So I'm going to go back to town. I'm going to heal up, save my game, and then I'm going to take my boat over towards Matoya's castle. Let's go back to our boat. I just healed up in the Elfland Inn. Oh, you little stinking crud, stinking wolves, man. I'm just going to run. I do need a lot more money and a lot more experience, but I'll show you guys in a bit a much better way to grind. But for now, I want to stay focused. I want to go back to Matoya's castle, give her this crystal. So, are you kidding me? One step? You know what? I'll fight these guys. Oh, gosh. Dang it, game. All right, let's keep on going. So if we go right back up this way, this is gonna be pretty much the start of the game. We've got the castle here, so we can go heal up there if we wanted to. I'm gonna keep on, black, I'm gonna keep on moving on this way because there is a different spot we could dock at that is a bit closer to Matoya's uh, cave, which is actually over this way. So it's kind of odd. Yeah, it's kind of odd, but you can go over the bridge right there, under it, I guess. So that'll take us right up to here, which is very close to where Matoya's castle is, right up this way. And now that we're a much higher level than we were the first time we came here, we don't really have to worry about the enemies that we might encounter. And in this case, just stinking imps. Yeah, weakest enemies in the game, pretty much. Unless you want to count the pirates from Provoka, which are in some ways weaker. But yeah, right up here, we are going to have the cast. Not the cast. Did I say Matoya's castle? If I did, I meant Matoya's cave. So we'll go right inside, get some amazing music. And let's go give her her crystal. Hey, buddy. The prince needs herb? I'll trade the most powerful, <laughs> the most powerful herb to get my crystal back. Oh, I can see. So I think it is meant to be like crystal glasses, like an eyeglass. I, it, I think it's a little bit up in the air whether it's her eyeglasses or if it's a crystal ball, but I'm pretty sure it sounds like glasses. But anyways, with that, we now go over here and we've got the herb. So I'm gonna go right on back to Elfland and I'll meet you guys there. Hey, we got an ogre. I'll fight you. Yeah, ogres are pretty much a joke at this point. We could probably kill them in one round. Honestly, by the end of today's episode, we'll probably be able to one-shot ogres. Oh wow, I just one-shot them anyways. Well, that was a critical, but still. Double ogre, holy crud. And we are back in Elfland Castle. So let's go right down the middle. Let's go directly to the prince and see if we can awaken this dude with some powerful herb. Hey, buddy. Z -z -z it's not working. Oh, let's talk to this guy. Oh, this herb will release the prince from Astos' curse! Look, he is waking! Oh boy, is this a dream? Are you the Light Warriors? Is this for real? So, as legend says, I give you the Mystic Key! Alright guys, we got the Mystic Key. That is something we've been waiting to get for a long time. In the inventory, it's just called Key. But now, all of those locked doors throughout the game, and locked chests and all that crud, we can now go and collect that. And there's a lot of good stuff to get. So, now that we've got that thing, the first thing I want to do is actually not go get a chest. I want to go back to Elfland Town and heal up and buy some crud. And here we are. I'm going to go to the level 3 magic shop, or level 3 white magic shop. I want to get harm 2 over on Dr. W. I also want to buy a whole buttload of healing potions and heal up. So, let's go do it. So, go right inside here. Let's go down to Dr. W. Give them some harm 2. Just like that. Now we already have Fire 2 on Red and we already have Cure 2 on Dr. W. Let's see, how much money do I have left? 2,000? Okay, so I'm gonna rest up at the end. Probably buy like 30 healing potions if I can afford it. I know I said I would buy a bunch of tents back in Koneria, but I'm super lazy, dude. I will eventually, but not quite yet. So we're gonna go over this way and we're gonna go and buy a bunch of healing potions, which I will not make you guys watch me grind out. All right, I bought as many as I can. So let's see how many that actually was. 44. Wow, we got a lot. Okay. So with that, guys, the first place I want to go is back to that northwestern castle where we fought Astos because there is going to be some uh, chests there that we can get now with the Mystic Key. So I'll just meet you guys back there. And here we are. So let's go right inside. The chests I want to get are over here on the left, but we're going to have to go through a bit of a maze to get to them. So let's go around this way. And while we are here, guys, we're also going to be doing a bunch of grinding. If you know about Final Fantasy, you might be waiting for me to talk about something called the Peninsula of Power. Well, that's a fan name for it. It's not officially named that, but I'm just going to let you guys know I will not be using the Peninsula of Power in this playthrough. Uh, but I will be talking about it in the next episode. But I am going to be grinding because right here, I think, is a fantastic grinding spot. 
Like, really, really good. So let's go up, and we automatically get a triggered enemy battle right here with some images. And what I'm going to do against these guys is just hit them a few times. We're going to go down to magic, and I'm going to go use just a good old Harm 2 spell, our new thing we just got. And this should wipe these guys out pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and uh, hit these guys. Now, these guys are not what I'm going to grind on. There's enemies in front of the other chests, which are even better. And basically what we could do is step on the tile, kill them all, step on the tile again, and get them again. The potential of power, as you'll see me talk about more in the next episode, it does have the possibility, for those who don't know, the potential of power is basically a programming error that allows you to, uh, to fight really strong enemies very early in the game. Uh, and if you play your cards right, you can actually defeat those enemies and get a lot of experience and a lot of money. The problem with the Peninsula of Power is that it is... It can require quite a bit of luck, where this requires basically no luck. So let's go... I probably should open that chest. Let's go ahead and open that crud. Get a Falcon. It's a weapon that I'm not going to use. I'm just going to sell that. Let's step right here, and we get ourselves three mummies. We can get as many as five. So here's what I'm going to do. If we find three mummies, I'll have all of my melee attackers spread them out like that. And I'm going to just use a regular Harm 1 spell because we're going to be grinding here for so long that I'm going to use basically all of my spell charges. We do get knocked to sleep sometimes, but sleep will not last for too long. So we'll go ahead and get just a regular old harm spell. It'll do a good chunk of damage, and then hopefully the melee attacks from my team will be able to finish them off, or we can just miss right there. Thankfully, the misses that we get are not going to last for too much longer. We're almost out of missing constantly territory. I'll go ahead and use... Actually, I'll just go ahead and fight right here. We'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. So, as we get up to level 9, this is going to get even easier, but for now, it's, it's a little shaky, but it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and hit that guy. Not quite enough, so once we get, I think, level 9, we'll be able to basically just uh, hit these guys with one harm, one spell, and then finish them off with melee. It's going to be awesome. So, go ahead and spread out our attacks a little bit more here, and get these guys down. The reason I want to grind here is because we can guarantee get mummies. We can hit them with harm and harm 2. And you guys will see, considering how easy these guys are, and they're only going to get easier from here, you'll see we get a pretty good chunk of experience. And it's even better if we get five and we just use harm two. Kill them all in one round. It's awesome. So go ahead and hit that guy for just nine. So we're taking some decent damage. That's why I bought so many heal potions. Let's go for way and get the silver sword to finish that guy off. So there we go. Got that battle done. And as you'll see, 900 gold from one battle, 225 experience. For how easy it is, that's really awesome. Get ourselves a power staff. This weapon is not very good for anything except for selling. It is worth a lot of money, as you'll see. It's worth like 6,000. So we're going to get a lot of money for that one. And I also want to go over here and get an iron, uh, iron gauntlet, that is. So I'm going to go to armor, and we're going to trade that up to this guy. And we'll equip it. There we go. So now we're going to go back out, and we can step in front of this tile. And boom, we'll get mummies. Five mummies, that's awesome. So if we get five... What I'm going to do is spread out my attacks and then go use a Harm 2 spell charge. Now, this is going to be like, what is it, 1,500 gold? If we can get this for with Dr. W in one round, it's amazing. I do need to heal up. <laughs> I need to heal up Red pretty bad right here. Let's go ahead and use Harm 2. Oh, low damage roll. Okay, well, one of them's going to live right there. Two of them are going to... How am I getting so unlucky? What the crud game? My strategy. My strategy, dude. No. All right, we're going to run away. This really is a fantastic grinding spot, but it looks like I uh, am getting a bit unlucky. It'll be a lot better once we get level 9. So we're going to go run away here. I'm going to go back to town, heal up. I don't want to finish this battle off because I don't want Red to have uh, low experience there. So a bit unlucky on my part, but yeah, this is going to be a great spot. We'll get up to probably level 10 here, and I'm going to run away from all of these battles because I don't want to have Red not getting the experience. You do got to love the good old Let's Play Curse, though. I tried to show off what I think is a great grinding spot, and I immediately die at it. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's the first time I've ever died here, but... Ah, well, that's fine. We're going to go to the clinic right here, get Red healed up. It will cost a bit of money, but honestly, that's not that much at this point. 200's not too bad, so we'll get them back to life. Let me go and fix the party order, just like that. Uh, I guess we'll switch these guys too, and I'll heal up at the end, and we'll try again. Now, one thing you could do, if you don't want to have to worry about luck like that, you could buy a bunch of tents back in Quineria, or you could buy a bunch of cabins here, and you can save right outside of the, uh, the place where we're fighting those mummies, and every few battles you can save, and that way if someone dies, you can restart instead of having to walk all the way back here, but honestly, it's not that long of a walk, so I'm not too worried about it. You know what? I'm gonna go back to town. I, now that I have that power staff, I can just sell that, and I can buy another silver sword so we can get that on red, so that'll be a really, a really good little help as well. And another thing, once we get level 9, as you guys will see, Ken will be an absolute beast. It'll be ridiculous, but let me go back to town. We'll buy the 
Uh, Silver Sword. So we'll go to sell. We'll go with Wei. And we're going to sell the Falcon. It's only going to be worth 225. But yeah, the Power Staff, that is what I really want to sell. So there we go. 6,172 gold. And it's really just not a good weapon for anyone. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about holding on to that at all. Uh, let's go back in. And let's go to sell. I'm going to sell Red's weapon as well since we're not going to be using that anymore. And we'll go to buy. We'll buy the Silver Sword. There we go. And we'll give that to Red. Awesome. So let's go and equip that crowd, and I'll meet you guys back at the grinding spot. Okay, let's try this spot again and see if we can get some better luck. See if we can get it to go how I wanted it to. All right, we got three, so we'll do the strat, which is split up our attacks, go to magic, do a regular harm spell. Let's see, now that we got the silver sword, big damage. Wow, just a one shot out of red right there. Yeah, that silver sword is going to make a pretty big difference for this one. And down goes another one with the harm. This is going much more like I wanted it to the first time. And they miss as well. So as you can see, hugely easy battle, and just like that, it's 900 gold, 225 experience. Yeah, and then we just go like that, boom. We don't have to spend any time looking for them. Okay, so when we have four, here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna have way attack. We're gonna go to fire two over on red, and then we'll just uh, have our other guys attack right here. So red will soften them up with that fire two. Okay, big damage on Dr. W, but we can just use those healing potions we bought. Good, got a miss right there. So we'll get some big damage out of that. Fire 2 should be enough to at least finish that one off. And uh, Fire 2 and uh, Harm 2 are both good here because these guys are weak to fire and they're weak to whatever the quad harm is, holy, I guess. Yeah, huge damage. Huge damage. There we go. This is how I was expecting this grind to go. And just like that, 300 experience, 1200 gold. And I'll go ahead and use some healing potions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing this crud. So we just step away, step back onto it, and boom, another four. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We'll split up our attacks and have this guy do some fire two. I've only got one more fire two spell charge, but that's fine. We'll go like that, and uh, yeah, get some big experience. We're gonna get level nine in no time, and then things just gonna get even easier from there. There we go, just like that, already level nine. I'm gonna keep grinding here until we get level 10, but now that we're level nine, I'm going to take the weapon off of Ken. And I'll explain why. Now, it, it is arguable that it would be better to take it off at level 7 or level 8. We'll get to that. So let me go to my status here. So we'll go look at Ken's status. Now, right here, you can see their hit percent is 29. And the thing is, once you get to 33% hit, in this game, whenever a character gets 33% hit, they get an extra swing on their weapon. So if we get to 33, he'll hit twice instead of hitting just once. The thing is, weapons also give you a certain amount of extra hit. For example, the Silver Swords will give you some extra hit, but for some reason, the Iron Nunchucks give you no extra hit. However, if we go to equip and we take this off, it's not gonna show up on the status screen. It's still gonna look like 29, but going unarmed gives you plus 5% hit. So that means at level nine, if we go unarmed, we now have enough to have 34% hit, which means we get an extra swing. The thing is, when you are disarmed or unarmed with the black belt, you get double the hits. So instead of going from one to two, we're now going from one swing all the way up to four swings. It is pretty ridiculous. So we're gonna do a lot of damage. Now you might notice that our damage is only 18 now. If we go up to our weapon, equip that, go to our status, you'll see we have 21 damage. So with the iron nunchucks, we do have more damage. With that said, if we unequip our crud at level 7 or 8, we would technically have higher damage because of the two swings. The only thing is you have lower critical without the iron nunchuck, so it's kind of debatable whether 7 or 8 is uh, a better time to unequip stuff. The only reason I didn't is because against like Astos and a couple enemies, critical hits really save the day, and without critical hits, we would just do one damage or two damage, whatever anyways. So I think until level 9, it's better to keep the weapon on. But now, now that we are level 9, you will see Ken is going to very quickly become a powerhouse. It's going to be pretty ridiculous. Five, awesome. So we'll go ahead and do a harm two on this one. We'll see if we can get a good swing out of Ken as well. So harm two going in. Okay, a little bit of damage right there. Okay, they're getting it up on way. That's what I like to see. Come on, Dr. W, just take these guys out. There's one. Oh my gosh, this is how I wanted this to go. Okay, not quite enough to take down that one, but still so easy. And this is going to be 1500 gold right here. Sadly, we're going to miss that one, and Ken's going to punch the air as well. So we're not going to see Ken swing quite yet. Somehow, all of the ones I targeted were the ones that <laughs> died, so I didn't really get to do much to them. Oh, well, let's try again here. Come on, Dr. W. Wow, we actually killed him. What the crud, Dr. W? Come on. Oh, here we go, Ken. Here we go. Only two hits. Darn it, Ken. You're supposed to be impressive. You're supposed to be impressive, dude. Oh, well, one of these days. I'm not a liar, though, guys. Eventually, Ken will be crazy. So, 375 experience, 1,500 gold for how easy of a battle that was. Kind of crazy. Let's go to items. We're going to heal up uh, way a little bit here. Probably give him, like, three of those. 
And let's just keep going. Five again. Oh, baby. Well, we just took out that whole group before they even got to take a swing on me. So, yeah, very, very easy. We're probably almost level 10 already. Let me go check. I mean, level 10 takes a lot of experience. Uh, no, we're not even close. Oh, well. Only two with us do melee attacks. No need for magic against just two of them. Oh, we got five. Yeah, it's so satisfying to harm to a whole group like that, dude. Oh my gosh. Unfortunately, now we are out of harm two spell charges, but I still have some harm one. And also, we could just uh, melee attack just two of them. I've only got one harm spell charge left. We've got a big group here, so we'll have to try to make this work as well. Unfortunately, Dr. W just got hit twice in a row and he's obliterated, so not a good look. Well, that kind of ruined my plan once again. So what I wanted to do was... We got a house back in the marsh cave. I was gonna go back outside, use the house. I know it's worth 3,000, but look at this, guys. 17,000 gold after just 15 minutes of grinding. So it's pretty ridiculous. I was gonna go out, use the house, get all of my spell charges back up, and then go back in and keep grinding. Fortunately, I got super unlucky there, and Dr. W is down, so I'm gonna have to go back to town, but... Going back to town only takes a couple minutes anyway, so not a huge deal. So I'm gonna do one more round of grinding here, get up to level 10, and we'll also have, I wanna have over 20,000 gold because there's a lot of spells I want to buy, and they're very expensive, so a small setback with this crud, but not a big deal. So as you guys can see, this grinding spot is absolutely ridiculous. Now, if you want to, if you just wanna get super overpowered, if that's how you like to play the game, feel free to go back to town, buy like three or four houses, and then just grind there, use all of your spell charges, use a house, Use all your spell charges, use a house, do that a few times. Get humongous amounts of money, a humongous amounts of gold. You could do that, or you could move on to the Peninsula of Power, which uh, I'm going to be talking about in the next episode. Personally, once I get level 10, I'm feeling pretty good. It's not going to be high enough level to uh, steamroll the rest of the game or anything like that, but I'm not really looking to steamroll the game. I want it to still be kind of a challenge, so I'm, I'm grinding to a point where I think it's good enough but not overpowered or anything. So I just healed up. I'm gonna go back to the castle, grind for another 15 minutes or whatever, and I'll see you guys then. Hooray, we got level 10 right there. I still have a lot of spell charges left, so I'm gonna keep using those until we run out. Uh, honestly, man, if I was playing on my own without recording it, I would probably grind here to like level 12 because it's so much fun to grind on these guys. It's such a good spot, but... I don't want to get too overpowered for the playthrough, so I'll just go until I run out of spell charges, but yeah. And I am out of spell charges, so with 28 minutes of grinding, I am level 10, and we are about 1,500 away from level 11, and I have over 30,000 gold, so for 28 minutes, considering I died twice, which probably wasted 5 minutes, yeah, you could pretty reasonably get this grind done in like 20, 25 minutes. Pretty awesome. But with that, I'm gonna go back to Elfland, heal up, and we're gonna start exploring more and opening more chests with that mystic key that we got. Ah, <sighs> we're back in Elfland, so let's heal, and now that we have a butt ton of money, we can actually afford to buy level four magic spells, which cost 4,000 a pop, but that's no problem for us now. Although, first I wanna buy some level three magic, so we're gonna go back to the white magic shop. I wanna get Cure 2 on my red mage, as well as heal, which is the group-wide heal on Dr. W. Let's go to red, let's get some Cure 2 action. There we go, let's go to Dr. W, and let's get some heal action. Looking good, let's get back out of here, and let's go over to the level four black and white magic shops. Right over here, we've got the black magic shop, so let's go inside, and you can see here we've got, let's go to red, we've got sleep two, which is a lot like sleep one, except it uh, is a bit more accurate, but it only targets one enemy. With that said, sleep is still bugged, so enemies always wake up on the first turn, and it basically sucks. Fast. Fast is extremely good. It can give us extra attacks on whoever we cast it on, so I'm absolutely going to get fast. It is one of the best spells in the game, in my opinion. We've got Conf, which is Confusion. If we use that on an enemy, they will start attacking their own party members. I guess it's okay, but most of the time we're just going to get resisted, so it's not really worth wasting a turn and wasting a spell charge on. Instead, I am going to get Ice 2. It's basically Ice 1, but more damage, and it hits all the enemies instead of just one. Pretty awesome. So we're done with Black Magic. Let's go over to the White Magic Shop right over here. And we're not going to get a whole lot here, but let's go take a look at what our options are. Let's go down to Doc W. So we've got Pure. This can cure poison. The thing is, it costs 4,000. We could just buy like 50 Pure Potions instead. And if we use Pure Potions, we don't have to waste spell charges on it. So I'm never going to buy this. We've got Fear. Fear can make it more likely for enemies to run away from battle. Kind of pointless. We could just run away ourselves. Actually, if we get high enough level, certain enemies will just run away from us anyways. We've got Anti-Mute. Now, this might sound like it would make you immune to getting silenced, 
but what it does is it cures silence. And the thing is, if you're silenced, you can't cast it, so this would only be useful if we got silenced on the Red Mage, and I specifically wanted to cure the silence off the Red Mage. In my opinion, not that useful, but Anti-Ice, it is a spell that can block some ice damage in some situations. I'm gonna grab that, it'll probably come in handy. Now, while we're here, I'm gonna go to the item shop, and I'm gonna buy a bunch of healing potions. I'll probably get back up to, like, 50, and I'm probably gonna get up to, like, 20 pure potions as well. We are gonna go back to the Marsh Cave, so I wanna have stuff, uh, stuff for that. Now, with that said, Marsh Cave, not nearly as dangerous as it was the first time, but it is still going to be a high chance of getting a lot of poison on us, so I'll just buy some stuff here real quick. So I've bought up to 60 heal potions and 20 pure potions, but I'm not done quite yet. I want to go back inside the shop, and there's something else I want to buy. Down here we've got soft potions, and later on there's going to be a petrify, or a stone effect if you want to call it that. So if we get turned to stone, we're basically dead. You can't do crud unless you get this potion to remove it. So I'm going to go ahead and buy a few of these. We're not going to be encountering them today, but a bit later on in the game, we will find enemies that can stone us. And I'd rather just have these just in case that happens because it is absolutely devastating if you get hit by that crud without these potions. So we'll go ahead and buy a few. I don't think we'll need too many, but all right, with that, let's go back to the Marsh Cave. I'll just meet you guys at the very bottom floor where those chests are. I'm not going to make you guys watch me get all the way down there. So I'll just see you guys in a few minutes, and we'll get some new chests. And here we are in the Marsh Cave, the bottom floor, right by the doors where we're going to open some crud. And we've got a bunch of these cruds. Okay, well, I'm just going to beat them up real quick. We'll do a harm spell just to knock this out pretty quickly here. And let's go inside and see what we've got. Oh, gosh dang it, dude. Oh, we've got wizards! All right, let's go ahead and deal with these guys. But this time, we've got ice, too. So we'll go ahead and cast that crud. And we'll have our other guys just spread out attacks, I guess. Whatever. See how well Ice 2 does, uh, unlike Fire 2, which we had to use the first time we were here. Now, Ice 2 is still not going to be super effective or anything like that. And Wizards are still very tough, even though we are a lot stronger than we were the first time we were here. And these guys are still no joke at all. So we'll go ahead and soften them up a little bit with this Ice 2. Not going to do a whole lot. Finding four of these guys, pretty unlucky. Oh, gosh, I just want to make it out of here without dying. Probably should have had my guys gang up a little bit more, but... Yeah, well, actually, you know, let's go back. I'm going to do a Fire 2 here. And let's keep attacking. All right, there's one down. It's just got uh, three to go. Oh, there we go. Big damage out of Ken. And Fire 2 should do a little bit more to these guys. And I actually could use my new heal spell just to get a uh, group-wide heal here. So I'll probably do that right now, just in case. Let's go down to heal. And yeah, that'll. it's not as strong as Cure 2 would obviously be, but considering it hits everyone, not too shabby. So nice little heal on everyone. There we go. And uh, let's finish off these two more wizards. Boom, got that guy. And did I attack that one? I did not. Maybe red two? Or not red two. Just regular old red. There we go. Four wizards down. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll take it. And let's go over and grab ourselves a silver bracelet. It's kind of like the copper bracelet that we already have. Uh, let's go to armor. So let's go and trade that over to Dr. W. It's kind of like the copper bracelet, except way better. Actually, you could give this one to Red if you wanted to, and it'd be really good for them, but we're going to get some armor for them that I like uh, not too far off, and I want Dr. W to live, so we'll give that to them. And uh, I definitely need to heal up a bit, so let's use a few of these healing potions. Not the house. We're not going to use the house here. Oh, very dangerous. Very dangerous indeed. So let's get back out of here and fight wizards again! I think if we go around the top tile, we might be able to skip these guys. I'm not super worried about it. Actually, we'll gang up right here, but I'll just see you guys after this fight. All right, got those guys down. Now we're going to go over this way. There's a few more... Bat? Get out of my way, you crud! I'm not walking around. You move! You move right now! Oh, okay, we're good. <laughs> we're going to go over and... uh Hopefully not get destroyed by werewolves! Let's go down and see what we've got inside door number two. And we've got ourselves more wizards! And for that, we get ourselves a silver dagger, which is not good. It's not useful for anyone on our team. Oh well. Let's just use some healing potions to get topped back up here. Nope, not the crown. Not the crown, dude! Uh, I think that... Oop, that was kind of a waste. I didn't really need that one. I think we're good right there. So let's get back out here. And we've got two more doors to go. The stinking bat would move. Yeah, we got him to move, dude. Ah, crud. Just want to get to the door. I just want to find out what's inside here. Will it be more wizards? No, it'll be nothing, dude. Yeah, it's fantastic. My favorite reward. Go through all this trouble and all we get is nothing. Oh, well, we'll go right here. Buy even more wizards. And after I get these guys done, we'll get this last chest and we will get the crud out of here. And even at this point, wizards are still 
quite a bit of a challenge, but not so extreme that I'm particularly nervous about it. But you can definitely see why I wanted to do all that grinding before we came back to the Marsh Cave rather than after. Oh wow, I was not expecting this to happen today, but we just got level 11. I didn't think that would happen until the next episode, but wow, there you go, dude. So level 11, our team doing pretty great right here. And let's see what we got as our final reward. It is 1,020 gold. All right, so with that, guys, I'm going to get back out of the Marsh Cave. I'm going to go back to Elfland, heal up, and then we're going to go back to Koneria, because the castle, as you might remember from the first episode of the series, well, the castle had some chests that we have to uh, get with the Mystic Key, so we're going to go get that. Quit. If I can get away from these stinking squums, boy, do I wish I had an escape rope. The cool thing is some dungeons later on in the game, after you finish the dungeon, it'll just warp you out to the start. The Marsh Cave does not do that. Ah, yeah. And here we are back in town. I didn't rest up at the inn in Elfland because I had enough HP to make it here. So I'm like, you know what, let's go save some money and heal at a cheaper inn. So we heal here. I want to go to the shop and buy back up to 60 healing potions and 20 pure potions. Now, if you want to play it safe, guys, just buy up to 99 healing potions. The thing is, that might sound excessive, but... They only heal for 30 HP, and as we get further and further into the game, enemies are going to start hitting harder, and it's not going to be rare to have to use like 5 or 10 potions after a single battle. It's it's going to happen, so you want a lot of these, and you can carry up to 99, so it's not a bad idea. And while I'm here, I'm going to buy 10 tents as well, so that way I can heal up on the overworld world whenever I want to. There we go, looking pretty good on items. So with that, let's go to the castle and let's get some goodies, dude! Oh boy, what did we wait all this time for? We've got 6 chests here, we get an iron staff. Not bad, not bad. Not that I'm going to use it. We've got a saber as well. Once again, not going to use that, but I will sell it. Another silver <laughs> silver knife or silver dagger, whatever you want to call it. Once again, just going to sell that. Over here, we've got some iron armor. Uh, here's the thing, guys. I think I might have misspoke at some point during the series. I don't know if I did, but we can use the iron armor on way. Red cannot equip that crud, so yeah, I'm just going to sell that extra one. So anyways, let's go and see what we got here. An iron shield, oh boy. And over here we've got ourselves TNT. Well, that sounds important, wow. So if we go over here, we can see we already have a uh, iron shield on way. So pretty much everything we found we're gonna sell except the TNT, which is required to progress the game. So gotta have that crud and we got it. So I'm gonna go sell a bunch of crud that we just got and we'll move on. Yeah, none of it's particularly worth a lot, but hey, every little, every little bit counts. It's gotta be very careful not to accidentally sell my silver sword. You know what? At this point, I could also sell the iron nunchucks on Ken because I'm never going to use those again. So uh, yeah, let's get rid of it. There we go. I'm also gonna give the gloves over to Ken and that way I can just sell everything that's on Ken. I don't have to worry about going to different characters. That's one thing you can do is all the stuff you wanna sell, just give it to one character. So that way you don't have to memorize who has what. So yeah, everything that Ken has, we'll just go ahead and sell it. All right, so with that done, next up, we're gonna go back to the Temple of Fiends. That's the place we went to to save the princess in the first episode. There's some chests there that are also locked, so let's go check them out. I was gonna say, remember back in the day when imps were threatening, but no, they, they never were. Here we are. So we're gonna go to the bottom right and the top right, and gosh dang it, wolves, leave me alone. Right over here. Now we are gonna get ambushed, but that's okay, because it's just gonna be by gargoyles, which are no problem at this point. I'm not even gonna bother trying to use slow on these dudes. We'll just spread out our attacks. Honestly, I think at least Ken can one-shot these. Maybe the other guys as well. So uh, let's see how we do. It's kind of crazy. We've got silver swords on our dudes, and Ken manages to hit as hard as these guys. They're pretty close to his heart right there. Uh, he only got three hits. He can get up to four. But, I mean, his damage is pretty comparable to the other dudes, even though they have silver swords, which are amazing weapons. And he's unarmed, so it's pretty cool. Oh, the door is locked by the Mystic Key. Fantastic. Here we've got the Rune Sword. That might sound super fancy, and it is a pretty good weapon, but it is not as good as the Silver Swords, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sell it. If you don't want to buy the Silver Swords for some reason, you could use that instead, but at this point in the game, 4,000 gold for the Silver Swords is really not that bad, so I would recommend everyone just get Silver Swords. And over here, we get ambushed by Gargoyles! And here we get ourselves the Wear Sword. Once again, it sounds pretty fancy, but it is not as good as Silver Swords, so I'm gonna be selling that. And we get, also, a soft potion. So now we've got six of those. Of course, we got to fight more gargoyles on our way back out, but we are done here, guys. We're done just going around the world and collecting treasure. We are ready to make some story progress. So I'll go back to the castle one more time, heal up, and, uh, or not, I guess the castle town. We'll heal up, and then I'm going to get back in my boat, and let's go exploring, dudes. Uh, by the way, if you haven't noticed, pretty much all of the episodes for the rest of the series are going to be pretty long. I don't know why, but I just 
like the long episodes for Final Fantasy. It just feels right to me, so... Yeah, we're gonna keep going with these long ones, probably for the whole rest of the series. Honestly, healing is a bit unnecessary, because I've taken so little damage, but whatever. I, it's only 30 gold, so I might as well get topped up real quick. And let's get exploring, guys. So the place I want to go to is pretty much the only other place we can go to, which I have... Uh, gosh dang it, Shark, I'm gonna run. I have had the option to go there sooner, but I didn't want to go there until we got the Mystic Key, because there's gonna be some chests that are locked there. And also, another thing I wanted to get before going here is the TNT, because that is going to be part of actually progressing the game. So what I want to do is go all the way to the left and go up. And somewhere over this way, we're gonna find where we want to go. Gosh dang it, Sharks! This is not a Jaws movie! Get away from me, dudes! I mean, we could probably one-shot this guy at this point, but... I'm just gonna keep running away. So let's go up here, look for somewhere to dock if we can find it. There we go, dude! Gosh dang it. Oh my, oh my. These guys are basically the wolves of the sea. All right, so we're gonna dock right here and we're gonna go over to the left. And eventually, we'll get to where we're trying to go to. Over here, there should be a cave. All right, I actually wanna go back and down this way because uh, <laughs> that's where the cave is. It's down there. There it is, dude. So let's go over and let's go inside. Well, we've already heard the name of this place before. Oh, you know what, I'll fight ogres. There's so easy at this point and they're still worth the experience or not really the experience but they're worth the money so i'll fight them real quick <gasps> all right in we go so here we have ourselves the dwarf cave we can go up here we can talk to this dude with the crystal leaving the blind can see hasto stole it from matoya so yeah if you ended up coming here before this point since you technically were able to then it can give you a little bit of a hint for what to do next but uh i don't know how you're supposed to know who astos is until you get to that point dwarves can see in the dark wow fancy can we see inside this room, though? Hooray! <laughs> That's the happiest little dwarf right there. He's just so happy all the time. I'm looking for the floater. I'll bet with it I could float anything. Okay, I've got some TNT, but no floater. That sound? Narek is digging a canal. Uh, uh cool. The rubble bracelet can protect you, like armor. Yeah, I think it's just telling you about the copper bracelet or the uh, silver bracelet that we now have. Hooray! <laughs> Yay, dude! We got a couple more guys up here. A lot of these will repeat dialogue. Yeah, that's repeat dialogue there. Did you meet Smith, our blacksmith? I have not. Is it this guy? Let's talk to him. For the Light Warriors, I will make a truly legendary sword. However, my supply of adamant is exhausted. So if we find some adamant, we'll have to come to that guy. Or if we find the full capital floater, we can go to the other guy. The earth is rotting slowly from the west. Well, that's evil. Let's talk to this dude. Oh, we already heard that dialogue. Alright, so now we have to go through a bit of a tunnel, and down this way we are going to have some more treasures we can get, which is always awesome. So let's go down, and we can't get in through the back, so we're going to go around to the side here. Got one more guy we could talk to, and this guy is very important to talk to. Oh, wonderful! Nice work! Yes, yes, indeed. This TNT is just what I need to finish my canal. Now excuse me while I get to work. And what that will do is it will open up a path on the overworld, so now we can fit our boat through and explore the entire world. Okay, we get the Iron Helmet, which I'm definitely going to give to Wei. Got a cabin, nothing too fancy right there. Down here we've got ourselves a Dragon Sword. And again, sounds fancy, but it is not quite as good as a Silver Sword, so we're sticking with the Silver Sword. And we've got a Silver Dagger, another thing to sell. Got a Wooden Helmet, totally useless, no thanks. Get a silver armor. That I'm going to be giving to Red. That's uh, a bit better than the iron armor. Well, okay, the thing is, they can't equip the iron armor, but they can equip the silver armor, so that's why I'm going to give it to them. So let's go to armor, let's go to trade. I'll give the iron helmet up to that guy. We'll equip that crud. Let's go trade, we'll give the silver crud to him, and we'll equip that, and we'll put the excess crud over onto uh, Ken there. Now, if we go look at our weapons, we've got a whole bunch of weapons. So I'm just going to hold on to those for now, but we'll sell them when we can. All right, there's that. Let's make sure I already got that. We did. I like how they call it a treasure box. The thing is, in Japanese, the word for treasure box is uh, takara bako, which literally is treasure box. Uh, so normally it would be called treasure chest in English, but because it's a very literal translation, it's treasure box. So we're going to get back out of here, and we're going to go check out that canal. Just have to get back to my boat. Yeah, there's no inn or anything like that inside the dwarf cave, so, oh well. All right, we're back in the boat, and the canal that opened up is right over this way. So this spot right here, that is what just opened up. So now we can go, and we can escape the Great Lake. Now, if we look like this, you can see there's the entire two north continents. It looks like, since we got through here, we could go around and explore the entire world. 
And we kind of can. We can explore the entire world ocean, but because we can only get our boat to stop at a dock, there's actually no docks in the entire northern continents. There's only two more docks that we now have access to that we didn't before. So it looks like a lot opened up, but kind of unfortunately not a whole lot did. But one thing that did open up is right here we've got a dock and we've got a new town. So let's go inside. And this is the town of Melmond. We talked to a guy in a previous episode that mentioned Melmond and it's, uh, Kind of in a bad spot. There's a lot of uh, tombstones and all this crud. Thankfully, there is still an inn. But if we check all these tombstones, none of them have anything cool to say other than, This is a tomb! Alright, let's talk to some dudes here. This town was invaded by the vampire! The clinic was destroyed and the town was cursed! Yes, there's no clinic here, so if you die, uh, you gotta go somewhere else. Warriors! Revive the power of the orbs! I'll try my best. Let's talk to this lady. Sarda does not fear the evils of the cave. Sarda sounds pretty cool. If the orb of Earth begins to shine again, the Earth shall revive. All right, here we've got some black magic. And this one is going to be level 5. 8,000 a pop. Now, some of these spells are pretty good. We've got Fire 3. It's basically Fire 2, but stronger. We've got Bane, a uh, instant death spell. We've got Warp. Warp can allow you to go to the previous floor in a dungeon. So if we're on floor 3, it'll take us back to floor 2 or whatever. We've got Slow 2, which is a lot like Slow 1, except it only targets one enemy, but it's more accurate, so it's got that going for it. The problem is, with uh, level 5 black magic, is we have no level 5 black magic spell charges on red, and he will not get any for a few levels, so not gonna bother with that crud. But how about the white magic? If we go here, go over to Dr. W, and we can see we've got Harm 3, we've got Heck 2? No, it's supposed to be heal too. We've got life. If we get this, we can finally revive fallen party members. Unless, of course, it is Dr. W himself who dies, in which case we can't. We also have cure three. Now, heal two is bugged, and it's actually a good bug. Normally bugs in this game are bad, but heal two is bugged, and it heals a lot if you use it in battle. If you use it outside of battle, it's just normal, but if you use it in battle, it is as good as heal three, which we don't get until way later. So it is extremely good, and I'm gonna be buying that right away. So there we go. I can only afford one more spell, so of course I'm gonna go ahead and get life. I do eventually wanna get cure three. Uh, actually, no, I don't wanna get cure three. I eventually wanna get harm three as well, but we'll go ahead and grab life right there. Even though Dr. W also cannot use a level five spell quite yet, but they can use one at level 12. I think red has to wait till level 15, so. Yeah, let's talk to some more dudes. We got a wizard looking guy here. Hey, buddy. Pass through the Titan's Tunnel, then south to find Sarda, the sage. All right, sounds like a our next objective. I'm a farmer. All right. Hey, buddy. I am Jim. My home is the Dwarf Village, but I am here investigating. I don't know what is investigating. They use, or they say the ancient people used a stone to make their ship float. Uh, th that doesn't make any sense at all. In the northern world, there once was a prosperous civilization, but now it is ruins. Kind of like this place, this is all ruins. We've got a weapon shop here, I'll, I'll show you guys it. It's nothing too special. So we can go check it out, and we can buy the Falcon. Not that great. We buy an Iron Staff, Saber, or a Long Sword. All not that great. The Long Sword is not as good as the Silver Sword, and it is also not as good as the Wear Sword, or the Dragon Sword, or the Rune Sword. So, no point to use it. This is a well. You might think that there is something to it, but in fact, it is just an ordinary well. Oh well. Oh, hey, talk to me. Warriors, revive the power of the orbs? I'm trying. Stop yelling at me. We've also got an armor shop, so we'll go up and check that one out too. The Titan who lives in the tunnel eats gems. He loves rubies. We'll have to find a ruby. That sounds important. So go inside here, and we could buy armor. We could buy the steel armor, except it costs 45,000. We could buy a silver bracelet, but we already have that crud for our dude. We've already got an iron helmet, we've already got all the other stuff. So, there's no way I'm gonna buy 45,000 gold steel armor. Not happening! The Earth Cave is on the peninsula southwest of this town. Ah, okay. And over here, the vampire of the Earth Cave is stealing the power of the Earth. We need your help. Well, guys, we've gotten a lot of little breadcrumbs for what to do next, but... With this long episode, we are going to go ahead and wrap things up here for today. We'll talk to this guy real quick, I guess. Everybody knows me. What? You've never heard of Dr. U? Uh, I have not. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here for today. We'll come back next time, and we, ch we will check out the Titan's Tunnel. We'll check out the Earth Cave and see if we can finally revive the power of the orb. See you guys then. Take care.